Hi, everyone, and welcome to our webinar series, Tools for Analyzing NASA Air Quality Model Output. This is session one, Review of NASA Air Quality Forecasts and Reanalysis. My name is Melanie Follett Cook, and I'm a research scientist at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, which is outside of Washington, D.C. Before we get started, I want to go over some details about our webinar. This series will consist of three sessions, each 90 minutes, followed by a question and answer period. Each session will be recorded and available on our training webpage shown here. This is an advanced training, so even though we're going to review some of the most important points, we strongly recommend that you view our previous webinar introduction and access to global air quality forecasting data and tools, which has more details and background. In order to follow along with the demos we're going to show today and throughout the webinar series, make sure that you've signed up for a free NASA Earth Data account and linked JESDISC to your account. You can find step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that at the link shown here. We'll use Google Colab and Jupyter Notebooks today and through the webinar series. Information on where to find those notebooks can be found on our training page. So try to copy the notebooks into your Google Drive and download the Colab app if you have not already. Here's an outline of our webinar series agenda. Today, We'll review the different NASA forecasts and reanalysis products relevant for air quality and demonstrate JESDISC tools for visualization and analysis of MERA2 reanalysis products. In sessions two and three, we'll use Jupyter Notebooks to interpret model output for air quality assessment. And here are some of the faces behind our training. That's me on the top left. And you'll be hearing from my colleagues, Dr. Pawan Gupta and Dr. Sarah Strode in sessions two and three. And we're very pleased to welcome our colleague, Dr. Xiaohua Pan from JESDISC, who will present in the second half of today's training. So now we'll begin session one, review of NASA air quality forecasts and reanalysis. The learning objectives for this session are to review and identify the different air quality relevant model outputs available from the Goddard Earth Observing System or GEOS Earth System Model, understand the difference between analysis, reanalysis, and forecast, identify which MERA2 data are frequently used in air quality studies, locate and access MERA2 air quality data and additional resources available from the JESDISC, JESDISC website, subset, download, and analyze the MERA2 air quality data using the web tool and Python API developed by the JESDISC. The Goddard Earth Observing System, or GEOS, Earth System Model is a global model that is designed to function seamlessly across many different scales and applications. Today, we'll talk about GEO's real-time atmospheric analyses and forecasting and long-term atmospheric reanalysis. But GEOS is also used to produce seasonal forecasts as well as study climate variability and change on decadal scales. GEOS can also be run at very high resolution to examine the impact of new satellite observations using Observing System Simulation Experiments, or OSSEs. GEOS is developed and maintained by the NASA Global Modeling and Assimilation Office, or GMAO. This session will focus on GEOS near real-time weather and chemical forecasts and reanalysis products. The GEOS Forward Processing, or FP, Analysis and Forecast. The GEOS Composition Forecast, or GEOCF and the Modern Era Retrospective Analysis for Research and Applications Version 2, or MERA2 Reanalysis. So first, I want to review these terms, forecast, analysis, 
reanalysis, and data assimilation, and how they relate to one another. Data assimilation is the process of assimilating or incorporating observations into a model state to produce the best current estimate of the atmosphere, land, or ocean. This is good because when forecasting future conditions, you wanna start with the best estimate of current conditions. So if we have our model state and our observations through the assimilation of those observations, we produce an analysis. An analysis is that updated model state, and it's a blend of the model and observations. Now our updated model state, which represents our best estimate of current conditions, we can now issue a forecast where starting from our best estimate, a simulation is run forward in time to predict a future state. In the GIS forecast system, data simulation techniques, the underlying forecast model itself, and the observation are evolving and constantly improving. A reanalysis uses data simulation to blend a forecast model simulation of the past with past satellite observations using a consistent data simulation technique and a single model version to produce a long-term data set that can be used for longer-term analyses. Before we start to review the GIS systems, I just wanted to say a few words about some strengths and weaknesses of air quality modeling. And when I say air quality modeling here, I'm talking about three-dimensional atmospheric models. Air quality forecasts can be used to alert the public and provide them with advance notice of the potential for poor air quality. Air quality models can also be used to test the effectiveness of different emission reduction strategies, and they can provide us information about regions or pollutants that do not have observations. This is particularly useful in more rural areas that might not have ground station observations. And it's also critical to study chemical processes that help us better understand pollution episodes. But there are also weaknesses associated with using air quality models. Models in general are only as good as what you put into them. Emissions in particular are very important to accurately simulating air quality. These can include anthropogenic emissions from sources like transportation or power plants, it can include emissions from fires and other natural emission sources like dust or emissions from vegetation and soils. Another thing to keep in mind when using air quality model output is the size of a model grid cell. The size of the grid cells in GSFP and GSCF are about 25 kilometers by 25 kilometers, which is high resolution for a global model. But this is still large when comparing against ground observations that come from individual point locations. So that 25 kilometer by 25 kilometer value might not truly represent a ground measurement, especially in urban areas where concentrations can change on very small spatial scales. And what the model outputs, say concentration of surface PM 2.5, that's a mass per unit volume, and it's based on size assumptions within the model and the emissions. Whereas measurements, actual observations of PM2.5 measure particles with an aerodynamic diameter of 2.5 micrometers or less. The overall take home message here is that air quality models are extremely useful tools, but understanding their limitations will help you better utilize model output for your application. We'll start with our review of GS systems with GSFP. GSFP offers twice daily publicly available forecasts of weather, aerosols, and carbon monoxide. GSFP is a dynamic state of the science system, so it is updated every six to 12 months. So users who would like to use FP forecast or analysis fields to drive other models or for other applications, we urge you to make sure your simulation period does not span one of these updates because this can introduce inconsistencies between the analysis fields. 
the GMAO near real time product web page, which I've linked to here, has details and dates for the latest model updates. The aerosols in GSFP are simulated with a radiatively coupled version of the Goddard Chemistry Aerosol Radiation and Transport Model, or go kart. Go kart is a bulk aerosol scheme that simulates dust, sea salt, black and organic carbon, sulfate, and nitrate. A future version of go kart will also include a brown carbon species. The animation on the right shows GSFP go kart aerosols for December 2019. In this animation, each type of aerosol is assigned a different color, as shown in the legend below. FP forecasts are issued twice a day, a 10-day forecast at 0Z and a 5-day forecast at 12Z. The forecast model and data assimilation are run at about 12 kilometers spatial resolution, but the output is saved at that 25 kilometer resolution I talked about earlier. Two-dimensional output products are available for every hour and three-dimensional products are available every three hours. There are 72 levels in the vertical, extending from near the surface to 0.1 hectopascals. The analysis fields from FP are available back to 2014, but again, updates to FP will introduce inconsistencies throughout that time. So if you're using these fields, be sure to see if an update has occurred during your period of interest. The forecast fields are available for about three weeks. A full and detailed description of all FP output can be found within the most current file specification document, which I've linked to on the bottom here. In the future, you can check to see if there's a more recent document at the link on the bottom of the slide. FP output is organized into what are called collections. Collection names contain information about the frequency of output, the number of dimensions, the type of variable, and what kind of grid the output is on. For a detailed explanation of collection and FP file names, see the most current file specification document or you can review session two of our previous webinar series that I linked to in the beginning of the presentation. There are a lot more details there. Here, I'm highlighting some collections with air quality relevant output. Aerosol collections contain information about aerosol optical properties, surface concentrations, column density, emissions, removals, and 3D mass mixing ratios of each aerosol species. They're available at three hourly instantaneous or time averaged intervals. PM 2.5 is unfortunately not currently available as an output variable, but it can be calculated using the equation shown here and using the variables in the T average 3 2D AER and X collection. One more note is that nitrate aerosols were added to the FP system in about January of 2017. So if you're using the analysis fields before that time, you should use the equation I'll show later that is used for MERA2, which also does not have nitrate aerosols. Next, we'll talk about GEOS composition forecasts or GEOSCF. The GSCF forecast system issues daily forecasts of global three-dimensional distributions of trace gases and aerosols. GSCF uses GS meteorology along with the GS chem chemical mechanism, which consists of over 250 chemical species and over 725 chemical reactions. Movie on the right is just a small snapshot of a longer movie from the NASA Science Visualization Studio that shows many more species. GSCF is not just GSFP with more species. There are some important differences between the two forecast systems. For example, there is no data assimilation of observations in the GSCF system. Instead, the GSCF forecast begins with a simulation of the previous day. This simulation uses what's called a replay technique 
to constrain the model meteorology. The replay technique is similar to the data simulation I described earlier, except that instead of observations being used to update the model state, an, another analysis field is used. The analysis fields are actually from a separate near real time system called GSFPIT, or GSFP for instrument team. FPIT is a frozen version of GSFP that is very similar to the version that was used to create the Meritulli analysis. Because FPIT is a consistent, unchanging model version that is not updated, the replay field from GSCF can be used as a continuous atmospheric composition archive. In the GSCF system, there are two schemes, two aerosol schemes that are run simultaneously. The first is go-kart, which I described earlier and is radiatively coupled to the atmosphere. GSCHEM also includes its own aerosol module, which is a bulk aerosol scheme similar to go-kart. GSCHEM also contains the same aerosols, dust, sea salt, carbonaceous aerosols, sulfate and nitrate, but also includes secondary, secondary organic aerosols. For more details about the differences between GoCard and GS Chem, you can visit the GS Chem website linked here. And for full details of GSCF, you can see the Keller et al. paper that I've linked to here. Here, I've added GSCF to our reference table. Five-day CF forecasts are issued once a day at 12Z, the replay and forecast are run at about 25 kilometer spatial resolution. Most CF outputs are available for every hour, and there's a special collection of surface outputs that are available in 15 minute increments. Similar to FP, there are 72 levels in the vertical extending from near the surface to 0.1 hectopascal. The replay fields are available back to 2018. And as I said earlier, since the same model version and replay technique have remained consistent over that time, this can be considered as a continuous atmospheric composition archive. Forecasts of the air quality relevant surface concentrations collection are available back through 2019. And the full forecast output is available for about two weeks. The file specification document linked here uh, contains a detailed description of all CF output. Again, visit the link at the bottom to make sure there isn't a more recent document. CF output is also organized into collections, but has different naming conventions than FP. See the file specification document linked here or session two of our earlier webinar for more details. Here, I've again highlighted particular collections relevant for air quality. The high frequency collection shown here in the top row as HTF contains instantaneous surface chemistry and meteorology output every 15 minutes. The air quality concentrations or AQC collection contains one hour time averaged surface concentrations of CO, NO2, ozone, and PM2.5 from GS Chem and SO2. Other species contain surface values of many more species, column quantities, emissions and removals, and 3D distributions of several species on pressure levels. Values of PM2.5 are available from go both GOKART and GS Chem. The GOKART PM2.5 values are only available in the high frequency collection. There are also instantaneous and one hour time average collections containing meteorolo meteorology variables. Next, we'll talk about the MERA-2 reanalysis. In contrast to GSFP and CF, which are forecast systems, MERA-2 is a reanalysis. A reanalysis is a consistent reprocessing of Earth system observations using a modern, unchanging data simulation system. To produce a reanalysis, a forecast model is combined with observations in a physically consistent manner. Reanalyses have become fundamental to research and education in earth science. They take advantage of the best 
features of both models and observations and produce four-dimensional gridded output that optimally combines the continuity of a model with real-world observations that might be sparse and or irregularly spaced both spatially and temporally. The modern era retrospective analysis for research and applications version two or MERA two reanalysis provides output from 1980 to the present at about 50 kilometer spatial resolution, slightly lower resolution than FP or CF. MERA two output contains a wide variety of meteorological, chemical and aerosol variables. The aerosols in MERA two are simulated using the go-kart aerosol scheme, except as I said earlier, there are no nitrate aerosols in MERA2. Here, I've now added MERA2 to our table for quick comparison of the three systems. MERA2 outputs are available on hourly, daily, and monthly scales. Similar to GSNF, GSFP and CF, there are 72 levels in the vertical, extending from near the surface to 0.1 hectopascals. Output is available back to 1980, and the latest output runs a few weeks behind real time. The full and detailed description of all MERA2 output can be found in the file specification document linked here. A unique feature of MERA2 is the assimilation of AOD. This figure shows the number of aerosol observations in millions that are assimilated into MERA2. You can easily see that during this time period, there are clear jumps in the number of observations. This means that when using MERA2 to perform long-term analyses, you should always take care to take this into account. Since about 2000 or 2003, the observing system has been relatively stable. It's also important to remember that only aerosol optical depth is assimilated. To review, Aerosol optical depth is a unitless quantity representing the optical thickness of aerosol in the entire atmosphere column. So aerosol properties that are not directly observed, such as the vertical distribution or the composition of aerosols, are not constrained by the assimilation and will therefore strongly resemble the model in most cases. Other times when there are no available observations, such as during the nighttime, or when retrieval algorithms filter out data with less certainty, like in the case of cloud cover or sun glint, MERA2 will draw towards the model. MERA2 collections are very similar to those of FP. Most air quality relevant collections are output at three hourly instantaneous or one hour time average intervals. These collections contain information about aerosol optical properties, surface concentrations, column density, emissions, removal, and 3D mass mixing ratios of each aerosol species in each size bin. PM2.5 is also not an output variable for MERA2. So again, I've included the recommended equation to use to calculate it. The variables needed are shown here and are in the T average one 2D AERNX collection shown here. GEOS FP and CF output can be viewed and downloaded using the GMAO fluid site. Our previous webinar included a demonstration of the fluid site and the available visualization and download tools. MERA2 output is available from the JESDISC website, and the second part of today's session will include information and a demonstration of available JESDISC tools. And now I'm happy to introduce my colleague, Dr. Xiaohua Pan, who will present the second part of today's session. Thank you, Melanie. Hi, everybody. I'm Xiaohua Pan a scientist from Justice at the NASA Garden Space Flight Center in Maryland. Welcome you participate this NASA RSAT training series aiming to learn tool for analyzing NASA air quality model output. You are in part one, which is a review of NASA air quality forecast and reanalysis. Melanie just reviewed and compared the NASA air quality forecast such as JUICE FP and JUICE CP. 
uh, with a mirror to a real analysis. Uh, next, I will introduce just this tool for visualize and analysis of mirror to data specifically. Uh, I would like to acknowledge my colleague Su Hong, Benita, Jennifer, all of them from Justice for preparing this training material along with me. Our learning objective in this part are to first identify which marital data are frequently used in the AQ studies. And then I will show you how to locate and access MERIT 2 AQ data and additional resources available from the Justice website. Last, I will show you how to subset, download, and analyze MERIT 2 AQ data using a web based tool and the Python API developed by the Justice. Three demos will be followed in the end. Of course, the ultimate objective of this training is to facilitate your study and accelerate your science discovery. That's indeed exciting. Now let's buckle up and start the exploration together. First, allow me to give you some brief introduction associated with MER2 data. As you may already know that MER2 is generated by uh, NASA GMAO, Global Modeling and Assimilation Office, but archived and curates at NASA JustDisk, where I work. JustDisk's full name is the Guarded Earth Science Data and Information Service Center. It's one of the 12 NASA uh, distributed archive center since the mid 1990s. We spot and, uh, all kinds of data in multiple disciplines. Our focus area are atmospheric composition and carbon cycle, etc. List uh, below. We are proud to enable science in this area. Besides archive data, Justice also provides service and support in wide spectrum list here. For example, we provide value added service on data. I will introduce some of service shortly such as well-known Giovanni, this uh, visualization tool, and other various subsetting tools. In addition, we also provide multi-tier user support, such as help desk, Earth Data Forum, and you also can follow our news at social media like Twitter and YouTube. Justice also actively engage in different uh, user communities, we have a user working group to collect the feedback from user. We also provide training to user by collaborating with the NASA RSET, like this training, and collaborating NASA Earth data. We also introduce our archive data and data service in various conferences, such as AGU, also in publications and in news. So before I start, I want to give you some introduction about MERA2, because this training is about MERA2. So as I mentioned, MERA2 is archived at the JustDisk. So this slide gives a brief introduction about MERA2. So as you know, MERA2 is very large. There are about a total like, 100 collection. 95 of them are standard collection, and the four are derived climate statistical collection, such as the climate detection index, and one value added collection to be released very soon, which is monthly PM 2.5 at the country level. This data have a like a <clears throat> half degree resolution, and uh, here I want to mention is uh, Meritu has a data latency is about uh, three weeks, which means in each month around uh, like the uh, 21st, for example, February 22, around this date, you will get all the hourly data, monthly data from uh, January. So Meritu is uh, widely used by 
studying the past events instead of uh, real-time events. We are proud to say that we have a large user community. For 2021, we have 7,000 users. So welcome you be part of this user community. I have to say that merit to data is quite complicated since there are 100 collections. And in each collection, there are many variables up to like 100 variables in one collection. But no worry, we are here to help you to discover the merit data for air quality study, which you are interested in. For your convenience, we summarize the key merit to collection and variable for air quality study at least here. In the first column, you can find measurements such as aerosol optical depths, PM2.5. And the second column is data collection. Here is the collection short name as here. And the third column is the parameters. Its variable long name appear in this collection. And the fourth column is temporal feature for this collection. So take a PM2.5, for example. So there are two collections uh, contain this variable. One is a one hourly average collection and another is a monthly mean. So you can read this uh, collection by click this link and find more information in data landing page. So you can find more information down here. For example, how to calculate the PM215 and how to calculate PM1.0 and PM10. You may already notice that each collection have a two type of short name. One is like this and another like this. So next, I will give you some introduction and how this short name are naming. So take uh, this kind of a short name, for example, like M2TMNXAER. It's a nine character short name for this collection. M2 means the uh, merit two. T is mean the time average. M is mean monthly mean. And NX mean 2D. And AER mean aerosol field. So this kind of short name is used by Earth Science Data Information System, such as JustDisk. And another short name look like this is TAVGM 2D A E R N X. So TAVGM is mean time averaged, M mean monthly, 2D mean the 2D field, and the AER, same as the last one, mean aerosol field, and NX mean this is horizontal level only. So this slide show the file naming convention, such as one file from the collection I showed earlier. So you can read this slides later and find out how each segment mean. Or you can read this part two from the series of introduction and access to global air quality forecasting data and two to find more information. In previous slides, I show you the key merit to collections and variables used for air quality study. You may wonder how I find them. Here, I will show you a general way to find them so that you will learn how to find them by yourself or find other variables of your interest in future. It's worth to mention again that Justice and actually entire NASA Earth data archive data as a level of a collection. And each collection includes many uh, variables, such as uh, 
AOD PM 2.5. Therefore, to find the variables, you must first find the right collection which contain this variable. First, let's visit Justice website. So we enter the website like this screenshot, and then you enter mirror two. You get uh, the result like uh, 99 data collections. How to narrow down? So you can go to this left column to refine by different ways, such as subject, measurements, and uh, source. But uh, at the end of this refinement, you still have uh, many how how to do that to remember our goal is to dig out the variable related to air quality so we recommend you to read Meritu file specification document to where to find it so if you don't know click this first result anyone so into any collection landing page. For example, here it shows example of a landing page for collection M2 T1 NXAER. So in this page, you will uh, find the file specification by click tab of documentation. Yeah, let's click it. So after click, you will find a bunch of uh, documentation list here, including MAR2 file specification document. So you click it and read it. And you want to read more about uh, how the variables mean you can click uh, FAQ. Also, I want to mention here is MAR2 data access quick start guide. I will give you more detail in next slide for this one. So after you read the file specification and you find your collection, then you put the collection short name over searching bar and search the short name. And then you got his data landing page similar to this. Next step, you want to download data. We have a bunch of ways for you to choose to download data, at least here. You choose one of them. I will give more introduction later on this too. So remember to click a reference to site data algorithm in your presentation or a paper. Here, we also want to emphasize to click a data citation, find the data DUI, so you can cite in your presentation as well. So this will comply the NASA open science policy. So we know the marital data is uh, complicated and uh, very large. That's why we provide all kind of uh, uh, assistant as list here. Our Meritu team prepared a Meritu data access quick guide. So from after you click the quick guide, you can find uh, like documentation, FAQ, and the data how to, and all kind of information here. So I would suggest you to bookmark this uh, quick guide. I did so. It's become my first aid when I want to search any Mary 2 information. Again, I want to emphasize the importance of reading file specification document. So you can click here to find the file specification document. After that, if you still have questions, don't panic and shy. Feel free to contact us. We are here to help you. We ha I have to boast that justice help disk are really good. So usually we reply to user within 24 hour in the weekdays. In case you want to contact GML directly, you can use this email address. After you find uh, your Meritu collection, next you may wonder how to subset and how to download and analyze Meritu EQ data. 
Here, I would like to introduce you some useful tools uh, developed by Adjustisk, such as uh, some is web page based and some is uh, Python API. First, let's check the web based tool. When you enter a data set landing page of your interest, such as this one, you will see the block of data access with several options. The first one is online archive. It provides the URL of the data set. You can download the original data set without any subsetting from here. You also, we also provide the link of uh, Earth data. So you can download data from there if you like. In this training, I will highlight a few web tools such as Giovanni. It is an interactive visualization web tool and will be demonstrated later. And when you click web service, you will see GDS. It is remotely accessed data with graphs or other script. Open that. It's another subsetting tool. And uh, threads, it, this tool can be used to subset and aggregate and download data. And the last one is subset and get data. I will demonstrate it later. So with this tool, you can subset, regret, and download data and compute daily statistics, such as mean, minimum, maximum, on the fly using hourly data. Besides the web tool, we also provide all kinds of Python Jupyter notebook. You can use it to access and visualize Maritu data. As listed here, the first one is how to use a web service API for subsetting Maritu data. It can be used to subset and download data with a Python API. I will demonstrate it later from Google Cloud. And second one is how to remote access Maritu data with Python 3 and calculate monthly average surface PM 2.5 for world country. And third one is how to access Maritu data using OpenDAP with Python 3 and calculate like daily, weekly, monthly statistics from hourly data. You can click each link and read more. Besides that, we have uh, miscellaneous tools for various use cases, such as you can click this to see how can I subset and download a large amount of Maritu data, and how to get a time series for Maritu data at a point location and other, other purpose. From now, let's get our hands dirty and then try this tool by yourself. So I will demonstrate how to subset, download, and analyze Maritu AQ data using Justice Web 2 and the Python API developed by Justice. From now on, I will show you three tools. First, I will demonstrate how to use Giovanni to visualize data. Giovanni is a web tool to visualize and analyze data. In the end, you also can download the plots. You don't need to, you don't need to download data and no need to know any programming language. And second one is how to use the level three and level four subsetter and regrader. This again is a web tool used to subset and download data. Then later a programming language is needed to visualize and analyze the download data. And third one is uh, how to use a web service API for subsetting Maritu data. It is a Python Jupyter notebook. You can use it to automate the process of subsetting and download data. You need to know Python. The difficulty of these three demo from A to C increase with the requirements of a programming scale from zero to high. To give you a better sense on these tools, I will demonstrate them using a case study. 
In this case study, the impact of a 2021 summer California fire is examined. 2021, as you know, is proved to be another disastrous wildfire year for the American West. As shown in this SOMI NPP little color image, overlaid with the fire hotspot in red on August 16, 2021, heavy smoke black the North California and transport downwind region. Air quality looked very bad over the fire impact region, including downwind region. Currently, Dix Fire is the largest single fire in California uh, in 2021. It started in May, July 2021 and burned nearly a million acres in California over three months. Now you may wonder, how severe was the impact of a 2021 Summer California fire on air quality? Was it the most severe wildfire season in recent 10 years, from 2012 to 2021? In this training, let's tackle these two simple science questions together. Next, I will demonstrate these three tools separately by using the same case study to recommend in which situation you should choose one two over the other two. Now, for example, a student, Amy, among you, contact us. She is an environmental science major without knowing any programming. And she tell us she won't tackle this two science question. And uh, she needed the monthly PM 2.5 over California for this 10 year period. Because she doesn't know any programming, she wants a web-based visualization too. In this tool, she just need to click a button from the web page to select variable, region, and time, and the plotting time, and then the figure are displayed. So many of you can relate it to her. Actually, not only like people do not know programming, for example, for myself, sometimes I want to just quickly get some preliminary result. I also like use Giovanni. So for the case of Amy and the people like me want to get a quick result, Giovanni is recommended. So in order to solve the problem, I would recommend her to create a Earth Data account and link JustDisk with your account to access data from Giovanni. And then next is find a monthly PM 2.5 data from Mary 2 in Giovanni. So for those who do not know Giovanni, here how Giovanni look like. First, I want to clarify our demo too for Giovanni. So I will show you the Giovanni user interface and demonstrate how to make a map plot and demonstrate how to make a time series plot. So, so for just for your information, in the end of this demo, you will get this two kind of plot. On the left is uh, PM 2.5 for August 2021. And the right one is interannual variation of August mean PM 2.5 over California for 2012 to 2021. Let's start the demo. So I would like to mention that I expect you to follow the demo where I demonstrate. But if you cannot follow, don't worry. You can watch the recorded video later and follow later. At the, the starting point, I assume you already create a Earth Data account and link the justice with your account to access the data from Giovanni. So in this demo, I will start. So let's exit first. So let's start a new browser and uh, search Giovanni. 
and then you get this page. So you log in, use your Earth data login information. Yeah, after you log in, you will see the four function of Giovanni for you. So first, see my login information is expand to, and here a few button I want to let you know. So whenever you have any feedback, if you cannot uh, go it smoothly and have some error page, you can click this button to contact the, our help desk. And also you can click help button. And here there is user guide, you can read it for how to use uh, Giovanni with its uh, four functions. Here is uh, several other buttons you want to know. So for selecting plot, after click, you can see many functions to plot maps, comparison, time series, miscellaneous and vertical. And after you choose one of them, for example, a time average map, you can choose the time range from two, and also you can choose the, the region. For this uh, case study, we study PM 2.5 from MARA 2. So in the searching box, I will put the like, MARA 2. Yeah, it's already come out. So MARA 2, let's first click MARA 2. Oh, yes. Oh, what happened? Oh, let's try again. Maybe let's narrow it down. Yeah, that's a way how to explore. So, Mara 2, PM 2.5. Let's see what uh, come out. Oh, you have uh, like a 2,000 result. So let's further narrow down. So for me, I will click. Okay, you only have a few now. So you can use the, this section to narrow down the result. And uh, you also can put in the additional keyword to narrow down. So right now I have uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have a 10 result. I want to find the total surface mass concentration and the monthly, right? So I find this one. Yes, or you can further narrow down your result like a total. Let's try what happened here. Yes, now you have only two. Let's see what these two. So first is total surface mass concentration, and second is total column mass density, PM2.5. So we want surface concentration, PM2.5. I want to mention that, so these two variables were added recently just for this training. So you guys will be the first group of user. So let's see, our case study I will review the demo of ob objective now. So you can bring up your slides of uh, demo objective. See what uh, we will do. So first I want to make a map plot. Let's see, I want to make a time average the map plot for August, 2021. So year is 2021. Months is August, yes. In space and date, okay. Yes, I need space for, because I only want to plot one month and I plot in also is August, 2021. 
And my region is North America. Let's see the region. So for this case, I only select a box bounding region. So I can like randomly click a box at here. So you will see here. So I can further specify my region. So my region is uh, 133 west. And here is a lower left corner. So here is a 25 north. And the next two is the up right corner. So for my case will be 62. 62 and the north is 67. Okay, let's see. It's not good. Oh, sorry, there should be negative. Yeah, this time it looks right. So next I will click a plot data. Yeah, we got a plot. Yeah, you can find the color bar from here. So the minimum is 1.8. You can read the unit from here. So if uh, like this will be 1.8 milligram per cubic meter. So let's to specify the range, let the plot look better. So for this case, the minimum is like that. So can we let the, let's see, nine it is 200. Let's see how this look in the plot. And the plot smoothing on, so this plot will look better. Yeah, it looks much better, right? So from this plot, you can see the North California, very high PM 2.5, and uh, transport downwind region. Another maximum is over British Columbia. So you not only see the maximum of PM 2.5, you also see, see the like transport downwind region. So after that, you can download your plot. And there are three options for you. So for me, I like PNG. And then you can open it. And like here, with title and the uh, color bar, so you can insert this plot into your plantation. So I would like to show you some extra information. So after you plot this, you can see for this activity, there are several things. You can click the input data information and the plot and the download. So you can download the CDF and the PNG and also lineage. So the lineage is uh, the data, subset data. So you can download the data from here. Okay, let's go back to plot the time series. For the time series, we wanted to plot it only August. So for this case, the time series, let's see recurring average, yes. Time series recurring average because we only plot August for the past 10 years. So let's select the season. I will only want to look at August. So I choose months. You can 
click August. If you want to see season, let's try. You can pick any one season. And for day is for, for like daily data or hourly data. But our data in this case is monthly. So I choose August. Let's see, here is the starting year. Starting year, I choose 2012. And ending year, I choose 2021. So next is a select region. So besides the select bounding box, as I showed in last case, we also can choose ship. For this example, we choose California. So first of all, you need to clean up this box if you did select region as I did earlier. You clean this box and then click this and then select US state, California. See this California is over here. So next you click, uh, you, you pick all the selections and then plot data. Yeah, it's very fast. So here you can see the interannual variation of a PM 2.5 in August, August each year. This 2012 August, 2013 August, and 2021 August. So from this time series, you can see 2021 August has the highest PM 2.5. Again, you can download data, for example, download to into PNG format. Here, let's open it. See, beautiful plots, you can insert to your plantation. So this function is pretty powerful. So you can have a bunch of flexible options to plot the time series. Again, you can explore here for this uh, uh, plot to choose the lineage. And you can download the data over here. So let's go back to selection. So that's the end of uh, demo of Giovanni. Let's go back to our slides. You can find the extra information of Giovanni from this page. There are many good information listed here, each one with a hyperlink. So you can explore this page by yourself. After Amy left, now Bob, a faculty in atmospheric department, contacted us. He mastered a programming language such as Python, or R or IDL, you name it. He tell us he also want to tackle this two sense question. And what he need is a monthly PM 2.5 data over California for the past 10 years. Different from Amy, Bob want to visualize by himself because he wanted to adjust the color bar and uh, compare with other data not available in Giovanni. But uh, he wanted some easy button. He wanted to use uh, the web page to subset data like a uh, variable region and time range. So in this case, we recommend him to use web-based tool, level three and level four, subset and regrader. So in order to solve the problem, Bob also needs to create the Earth Data account and link just disk. And he needs to know more than Amy. He needs to identify the Maritu collection, which has the monthly PM 2.5 data in Justice website by searching the Maritu file specification document. In this case, 
we ident identified as a collection M2TMNXAER. And he also need to how to calculate the PM2.5 from MER2 because uh, in this MER2 uh, version, the each variables are saved, but not the total PM2.5. So he needed to read the science FAQ number four to learn how to calculate the PM2.5. And after that, he needed to use the subsetting to click a subsetting get data and uh, download the data after that with wget and cur and last he need to use his python or other programming tool to visualize the data i will show more detail and demo so for those who don't know where to get the subsetting and get data. So I will show you this page. So after you know which data collection uh, you will use, so you input your collection short name over searching bar and then get the data landing page like this one. So first let's see this landing data page. So here is a collection title. So in this title, as you see here, the two type of short name showing over here, and here is long name, and over here is a summary about this collection. So in this section is a data access method. So subsetting two is over here. So here is a the two I want to demo you. And after click here, you will see another window pop up, look like this. So before I start this demo, I want to clarify our demo objective. First, I will identify the marital collection, which has a monthly PM2.5 data in Justice website. By going through these steps, I will give more detail during the demo part. So next is demonstrate how to use Web2 level 3 and level 4 subsetter to subset data. And then I will show you how to download the file choose uh, after going through this selection. And uh, then I want to mention I will not demonstrate how to analyze and visualize the download data. And uh, this will be demonstrated by other instructor in part two and part three. So next, let's start the demo level three and level four subsetter. So first, I recommend you to find the quick guide. So if you already bookmark, that's great. So for me, I click here. So right now I want to identify the Merit 2 collection, which has a monthly PM 2.5 data. So I click the quick guide because I want to find the Merit 2 file specification document. So where it is? So click the documentation. See, you can find a Meritu file specification from here. So you click it, this uh, PDF document. So next, let's search PM 2.5. Okay, great. So here I want to find the collection. So by putting in the PM2.5, I locate the collection. Here is a TAWG 1 2D aerosol NX. And the next is another short name. So this uh, collection is hourly. For us, we use a uh, monthly. So let's try. 
I I use this short name. So I put this short name over here. So remember the naming convention. So T1, which means the time average one hourly. For me, I want to use the monthly. So I click monthly. Oh yes, the monthly come come out. So in this file specification, only list the variable name for hourly data. Let's go back to see. Uh -huh. Yes, this uh, like variable list for hourly data. There are about like 50 variable. However, we don't list the monthly data for this uh, corresponding to this hourly data. This monthly data actually have a same number of uh, a variable as the monthly, uh, sorry, as hourly data, just like monthly mean of this hourly data. So let's try TM again. So now we identify the collection name is M2TMNXAER. So Let's go to the go back to the Justic website. So Justice Disk. So next I want to find the data landing page for this collection. So I put in the short name. It's like this. This part is a model version used to run Mara 2. So click it, click it. Then here we enter the data landing page for this collection. So you can read a summary for this collection over here. Let's go over some basic information about this collection. So here is spatial coverage and temporal coverage and the file size. So it's a, like a 481 megabyte per file. So in this case is per month. So it's quite big. So next I will show you how to, a trick, how to see the variable list if you don't want to read the file specification. So you click web service and the GDS, see, here list the variable and the longitude latitude information so that's a trick for me so you can borrow and remember you also need to know how to calculate the merit pm 2.5 from individual component let's go back to the the quick guide so where it is so i click faq then I click signs FAQ. Here is several FAQ provided by GMAO. So let's scroll down here. How the fourth one is how do I obtain surface PM 2.5 concentration in MER2? So here give you the equation how to calculate the PM 2.5 from five components. So you can write down this equation in case you need to calculate the total PM 2.5. So next is uh, how to use the subsetting two. So let's go back to the data landing page. Yes. So here is monthly mean time average single level assimilation aerosol diagnosis. Just make sure we are in the right data landing page. So next, click the subset and get data. So from here, you will see this pop-up window and uh, download method, click it. Oh, you have a three download option. The first one is to download original data no subsetting so you can download data from here in entire uh, like in original size 
Second one is you can choose to get data subset using OpenDAP. So OpenDAP also can subset data like a variable region, but uh, we choose this one. Get data subset using the just this subsetter, which is uh, what we call level three and level four subsetter, because this function also include a regrading uh, function. So later, if you want to regrade, you can click. So in this case, we choose uh, the third one. And next is the method option. Here is how to select the data range. So for this demonstration, I will uh, show how to download the uh, data from, uh, let's see, June, 20, June 2021 to 2021. Let's click here. I want to August. For this demo, I only de uh, demonstrated how to subset data only three months to save data. In your case, you, you, you want to download 10 year data, remember? So after select time, let's uh, refine region. So let's see. Oh, okay, we want to choose North America. Let's first uh, choose a bounding box like that, and then we can refine the region by typing. So the first two is the lower left corner. So it's a negative one, three, three. And the latitude is a 25. The next two is a upright corner. So first is longitude is a negative 62. And the latitude will be 67. So you can read the, the detail from our demo objective. So you see the region are highlighted in the green box. So next, let's subset the variable. So variable to calculate the PM 2.5 is uh, organic organic surface mass concentration. So let me highlight the variable I need. So easy to find. So I know I want the surface mass concentration. Okay, great. So let's pick. So first is the carb black carbon. So click it. EMS is not in PM 2.5 and dust. Yeah, there are two variables related to dust. We pick the PM 2.5 because dust is cause uh, aerosol. So we only choose five mode part. So let's choose the organic carbon and uh, sulfate. And uh, for sea salt, same, we choose only PM 2.5. So let's count. There are five variables used to calculate total PM215. So we got all of them. Here is show you the regrading option. So you can choose a bilinear. You have several options. And here show the, the regraded option. So there are a bunch of options. And if you want to read more, you can click this button. And to read detailed information about the regrading type and the grade. For me, I don't want to regrade. So I ignore this option and just click get data. Now you get a list as shown here. So if you just download one or two, you can click, click it and download it. 
that's pretty easy. But if you have like a hundred files, you cannot click one by one. So we provide a method to download uh, all the files together. So you can click here, download link list. And for me, I will save to my download folder. And, and then you can click instruction for downloading. So you can click wget and cur to learn how to use wget and cur to download data. So I will skip this part. I assume you already read it before this training. So now let's see the file I download. Okay, so here is a file I just downloaded. Let's see what it look like. Oh, it look like this. Okay. Now let's use wget. So we go back to slides to find the command how to download. Let's go back to the slides, yes. Here is a slide for demo objective. I list a command here for your reference. So you copy this command. So you copy this part. And the, this part is uh, the file you download. So let's copy this part and uh, open a, a terminal. So I use Mac. So I, my terminal look like this. So let's first see the file. Yeah, this file. So I copy the command over here. And after the I, I enter my download file name to here. Okay. So click it. So for your case, so you just copy the first part from the partition and enter the the download the download link list to here. Click. Great. Let's see. Oh yes. Now you download this for data. So first is the bar to read me. It come with every download. And these three are the file you just subset. Let's see, does it look good? So for me, I use a panoply to have a quick check. So I click this data and my panoply come out. So I click any variable. See, first I check the variable. I subset two, one, two, three, four, five variable. The longitude and the latitude and time will come with this file. So let's see. I click a black carbon. And see, this data is right, look right. So you can use your own program to check the data. Now we download data. Yeah, let's see. We download three files, so three monthly files. We can check other two. And next, I will show you how to use a core to download data. Remember, I my case is I use Mac. So for Windows user, you may have a different commands. So Please go to the data access uh, link to find out how to download user uh, Windows. So for me, I use Mac, I copy this command, cat. So, cat. And then first let's remove the file I just downloaded. Yes, and then cat. 
here is uh, the link file. So I copy this and then I copy the rest command from the slide. Let's try. Yeah, let's go. Let's see. Yeah, it's here. So go to this time I want to download the folder and click any one of them. Check organically. So you got data. Then so you can use your own programming to analyze and visualize into your flavor. Let's go back to the slides. After Amy and Bob left, now scientist Carson in geophysics lab contacted us. He's good at Python. He tells us he also want to tackle the same two science question. What he needs is also data, monthly PM 2.5 data over California for the past 10 years. Same as Bob, he wants to do his own visualization. He doesn't need any easy button. So he just want to automate the subsetting, like a subsetting variable, region, and time range, and download data with the API. Here we have a Python API too for him. In order to solve the problem, he also needed to create an Earth Data account and the link a just disk. He also need to identify the marital collection uh, with a monthly PM2.1 data. And he need to read the marital file specification document. He need to know how to calculate the PM2.5 data in marital. Different from Bob, he need to know to, how to use API to subset and download data, either from his own local machine or from any cloud form, like uh, Google Cloud. In the end, he need to visualize the download data with his own script. First, I would like to clarify demo objective. At the first step, this user need to identify the marital collection, which has a monthly PM2.5 data. We need to go through these steps. I demonstrated in the demo two, so I will not demonstrate this one in demo three. Next, demonstrate how to run the Python API. It's a Jupyter notebook. I will demonstrate it from Google Cloud in this training. Then I will demonstrate where to modify this Python API two to subset and download your data at least below. Last, I will demonstrate how to move the download data from Google Cloud to the local disk in case you want to analyze data from the local disk. I will not demonstrate how to analyze and visualize the download data because in the part two and part three, our instructor will demonstrate that. So now let's start our demo. So let's exit the partition. So we need to go to your Google account. So for me, I already log in my Google account. So I go to my Google Drive. So for this demo, I assume you already downloaded the, this uh, Jupyter Notebook to your local disk. In my case, I download to my local disk as here. So next I will upload to my Google Cloud. So I enter my folder RSET training. So for those people who don't have a Google Cloud, you need to add it. You click here. and you search collaboratory. 
See, for my case, I already installed, so it should install. If you don't have one, you need install. So with that, you can read the notebook. So let's upload. So I upload from here. So I click it. Here is this notebook. How to use a web service API for subsetting marital data related to PM 2.5. So just this application programming interface, in short, is API is intended for user who prefer to employ our data search and subsetting service using a script instead web browser interface, as I showed you early, use a level three and level four subsetter. So user can avoid to uh, do that, like, inter, uh, like directly to download data use this uh, uh, script. So the API is a communication protocol that allow user to find the data set and data granule that they need and download any desired data set. Information is passed back through in JavaScript objective notation is JSON format. So you can read more information and more detail by click this link. So from there, you find the other example of how to use this API. For this training showing here, uh, we demonstrate how to use uh, the API to subset a uh, asynchronous request to justice subsetting service in order to obtain subset of marital data. More specific, we subset data as showing here, a collection is monthly uh, collection with short name M2TMNXAER, and the variable is a five aerosol component, and the region is over North America. Time range is uh, in order to save time, I only subset three months. And later on, after you download the, you can use this equation to calculate the total PM 2.5. So this example code is written in Python 3. So you can use all the libraries. Because I show the, this case from Google Club. So Google Club already set up the environment. So you do not need to download all this module by yourself. That's one reason we use Google Club. By the way, you also can run this uh, API from your local machine, but uh, you may need to download, install the module you need. So let's click the first uh, cell. So this cell is just to import the required Python library. Let's try. So after install the modules, the second step is to initialize it. You are live poll manager and see the base URL for the API request that will be sent to the Justic subsetting service. So you just click it. And the third step, I by the way, I want to explain each line and you can read it later. The reason I uh, skip because actually you don't need to understand these steps. It's standard template. So you just go through each step and click it. The third step is define a local general purpose method that submit a JSON request to JustDisk server. So can check for any error and then return the response. This function is created for convenience. And this task will be repeated more than once. So here is a function. So you click it, it's work. And the fourth step will be define the specific detail of a subsetting. So this section, step four, and the following sub, uh, step five, here is a place you need to modify to into your case. So this only two steps you need to 
pay attention and modify into your case. So for my case, the product I needed to put in the collection short name as showing here, monthly aerosol data collection and the variable is a five aerosol component. You can find the, the names from the file specification document. And here define the, the region and the beginning time and end time. In my case, I don't want to interpolate regrading, so I comment out these two. If you want to regrade the output into other grid, you can cancel this. And in the fifth step, so the design spatial and spatial, spatial and temporal constraints along with the data set and variable specification are stored in JSON-based web service particle structure, which is named sub-request, subset request. So in this sub-request, you will define the method name as a subset and type and like this, you don't need to change this part. Actually, you don't need to modify this part is defined by step four. The only part you may need to pay attention is here. In this case, we have five variable. So say start zero to four. If you have less or more, you need to add or remove from this list. Data set ID and variable list. Other part you just follow this pattern and the sixth step is to the json format subset request is posed to the justice server and the job id is extracted from the response and will be used later and reference for the request so you just define the subset request you put over here and and then you oh what happened oh, i didn't click here, let's go back. I've got to click step four, step five, and then step six. Yes, I got job ID and status is accept. So the seventh step will be construct JSON WSP request for API method. You don't need to change it. The rest part, step six, seven, you just click. Yeah, this is side and complete. And then the A step will be construct JSON WSP request for API method, get the result. You can read the detail later for what this step is doing. And the ninth step is to sort the result into document and URL. Again, you don't need to understand. So here list the document, readme documents will be downloaded. But the, for our case, we didn't want to download. We don't want to download. And 10 step, let's see what 10 step here. In 10 step, we download data. This is a real step to download data. So in this case, you need to put in your Earth data user ID on the fly. For me, I should put in. Okay. So I think the data is downloaded, you see here. Three data are downloaded. That's great. So next, let's see where the data is. So we click it. Yes, it tell me the data under the directory content. So where it is. So I click this file. Oh yes, it's over here. So how to the download data is over 
Google Cloud. In case you want to analyze data in your local disk, you can click the three dot and download it. But if you download like 100 data, you don't want to click one by one. So how to do that? So here is step. Show you how to zip data first. Let's do it. Zip all the download data. Let's, let's uh, refresh. Yes, it's over here. So what I just did, I zip all the file, and then now I download. Let's check my local disk. So in my local disk, I found this file, zipped file. I click it. Let's check the data. So I download it, let's check. This time I pick Sophie. Hmm, yeah, this look right to me. So we successfully download the, the data with API. Congratulations, hope you also did it. Let's see, so with that, I will end this demo. Let's go back to slides. So here I list uh, the acronym for your convenience to refer later and the reference. With that, the part one of this training series is done. Thank you for your participation and interest. Next section is question and answer part. If you have any question, put them into the question box. Our instructor will answer them. If you have any question after the training, feel free to contact us. Thank you so much, Xiaohua, for that amazing in-depth presentation. Um, that's really exciting to see all of the available tools um, and resources that the JESDISC website has. So take a minute and please enter any questions that you might have into the questions box. And I see some people have started doing that already and we'll go through them in the order they were answered. So I'll just give, give it a minute. Okay, so let's start the Q&A. Thank you everybody for starting to put in questions. And so here we'll start with question one. Which global ground air quality data are used to develop AQI forecast products? The AQI or air quality index is a quantity used by the US EPA um, to communicate the potential for exposure to poor air quality and the potential for health impacts. Um, when the EPA issues AQI forecasts, they use U.S. ground reference monitors uh, that measure PM2.5 and ozone, along with weather forecast models and satellite observations to generate the AQI forecast. And I've included a, I've included a link here for more information. So the question references global ground air quality data, and the you, the EPA AQI is a very specific equation for the US. So other countries might have different air pollution indices. They'll use potentially different pollutants or different equations to generate their own AQI and they'll use their own local data. Moving on to question two, um, is the unit right? So I think this is in reference to the, Mara, the Giovanni demo, Xiaohua, would you like to unmute? and answer the question? Sure. The unit should be kilogram per cubic meter from original output. In this, uh, in this Giovanni demo, the minimum map, if you remember, is about 1.8 E negative nine kilometer, uh, kilogram per cubic meter. So in this case, it will convert like, like a 1.8 microgram per cubic meter. 
I'm sorry, I, I, I know I said wrong. So now I crack it as a 1.8 microgram cubic meter. Yeah, that's it. Great. Okay, question three. Can we plot MODIS AOD products with three kilometer and 10 kilometer resolution in Giovanni? And the answer to this right now is no, Giovanni only provides gridded data from MODIS. And those are currently available at one by one degree resolution. But we have, um, we've previously done an advanced training um, at our set on the high resolution MODIS data, and you can get more information um, at the link that we've included here. And I should mention, uh, we're going through this now, but this Q&A document will be available for review um, in a day or so on the training website. So you'll have access to everything we're showing here. Question four, why is there a low value in 2019? So I think I'm gonna let Xiaohua unmute because I think this was during her demo. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say that's a very good observation. So it's an interesting question, worth it to investigate more. I just did a very quick research as uh, I, I searched the uh, wildfire uh, in California. So you can click uh, the link and see, I don't see any large fire in 2018. And uh, again, I want to emphasize for this demo, I only averaged over California. So I know there were a large fire in 2019 in Western US, but not uh, in uh, California. Yeah, I think I'm done. Sounds good, thank you. Question five, I have a feeling this is gonna be another one for you. How do I download Giovanni PM 2.5 data in CSV or tabular format? Yes, for people who want to see as we, for uh, my demo part, yeah, as you see, the output will, uh, you can find a uh, download data from Lineage, which is a uh, NetCDF. But uh, if you want to get CSV, you can download data uh, in the plotting type as time series. So after, uh, after all the selection in the end, you have option to download data as a CSV. So here, uh, right, like look at the, on the left-hand side of history, downloading button, so you can explore over there. Great. Um, question six, is it possible to use MATLAB instead of Python? And the answer is definitely yes. There are many different programming languages. Everybody probably has their favorite um, that can be used to analyze data. So uh, when we're presenting, we try to use open source or no cost tools. And MATLAB is one of those program programming languages that requires a license in order to use. So we try to stick with Python um, and other open source uh, languages. Question seven, where did you get that script? I did not read it anywhere, so I think I'm going to let Xiaohua unmute and point people towards the scripts that she showed. Yeah, look like a question seven and eight are same. So you ask where to download the script, a uh, Python notebook. So uh, I'm sorry, we, we will send uh, this link to you shortly. And uh, here in the QA part, we list a uh, general uh, information for how to gather all the how to's and uh, one, how to use a web API for subset numeric two. You can, uh, sh uh, you can use that for general information. And shortly, again, shortly we will send you the demo, the one to you. Okay, and do you wanna take this next one? After we calculate the surface concentration of PM 2.5 or one or 10, what is the unit of the PM? Yes, uh -huh. for original data is a kilometer per cubic meter, a kilogram per cubic meter. 
So if you download data, you will have this unit and you can use other conversion factor to convert into like a macro gram per cubic meter. So can we use air quality, can we use the air quality on Landsat imagery using Google Earth Engine? And I'm going to be the, I will definitely invite my other um, colleagues here to weigh in if they have more information than me. I have, I'm not an expert at using Google Earth Engine, nor am I very familiar with what air quality relevant observations might be available on that platform. Paulon, do you happen to know? Uh, you can yes. definitely use the layers. Go, go ahead, thank you. Sure. Yeah, so the question is, can you use the air quality on Landsat imagery using Google Earth Engine? So yes, uh, Google Earth Engine does have Landsat data, although it does not have any air quality related parameters retrieved from the Landsat imagery. Therefore, you will have to do that yourself using certain uh, research algorithms or your own research. Uh, in addition to Landsat, Google Earth Engine also hosts data from TROPOMI satellite, MODIS satellites, and many other uh, NASA. We are actually in process uh, to uh, populate Google Earth Engine with uh, some of the GIS model output that will happen in near future. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. And um, let's see. Question eleven: Do all three techniques give the same results when we plot the data? I'm not exactly sure what this is referring to. I can take this question. Sure. So yes, as I, I showed, I demonstrated uh, three. So first one, um, the different for first one is we uh, don't need download data. So you can uh, plot on the fly. So in the end, you get the same, uh, same data. For the second and the two, definitely, these uh, two tools are used to download data. So with all the uh, configuration I showed in the demo objective, we, we download the same data. And for the mm, second and the third one, so you need to use your visualization tool to visualize, do analysis. So that's a big difference from the first demo. Thanks. Question 12. Is there any plan to lower the spatial resolution to a meter scale in the future? And if this question is in reference to global modeling, um, when we increase the spatial resolution of our models, we increase the computational expense of running these models by orders of magnitude. So while um, the GMAO um, is definitely experimenting with running GEOS at about one kilometer or spatial resolution, the computational power is so great that we can typically only run these for very short time periods. So I don't see a meter for a global meter forecast um, in our immediate future. <laughs> there are more regional models like CMAC um, or other uh, not global air quality models where one kilometer resolutions are possible and are used. But again, those are typically uh, for shorter time periods. Question 13. Hello, I have heard Mira2 data has a major limitation over polar oceans and at tropical latitudes. Is that correct? Um, so, um, I'm not, I see Jennifer is typing right there in the chat. <laughs> um, 
So I'm not exactly sure what quantities this is asking about. Um, if you are asking about the air quality relevant um, data that we've discussed today, um, Mara two, there are um, there is documentation, I believe, looking at the evaluation of Mara two, and there are research publications. Um, but in general, Mara two will be closest to the satellite data where there are satellite observations available. And I see Jennifer is putting some information about um, the projection of Mara 2. Okay. Um, does anybody want to weigh in on that question before I move on to question 14? Okay. So question 14, is the GSCAM CF output different from the GSCAM basic model? If so, what is the difference between the two? I see the basic model gives PM 2.5 composition data. Yes. Um, so the, the version of GSCAM run in GSCF is, I believe, the most up-to-date version of, GS, of GSCAM. Um, I think, I believe the, the version should be, the, the exact version should be available on uh, the GMAO website. Um, the model does output composition data and those quantities uh, are also likely available in the CF output um, in the same way that they would be available from GSCAM. When you download GSCAM from the GSCAM website, um, you're most likely downloading a version of GSCAM, which is a chemistry transport model, which is capable of using GS or other um, weather fields. Um, as the base weather model. Um, when we're running GSCF, we're running a very specific um, version of GSCAM that has been made to be what's called uh, ESMF or Earth System Model compatible. Question 15, why does GSCF use the replay technique instead of the data simulation? What is the advantage of the replay technique? Um, so one difference, um, and I can't speak as to, as to why they chose this, but one advantage of doing the CF forecast the way that they have is that the FP system is, as I said, very dynamic and is constantly being updated. Um, in terms of the model version or the observations assimilated um, or even the kind of data assimilation that is used. Um, in GSCF, because the system has remained stable, those analysis, or I'm sorry, not the analysis, the replay fields um, can be used um, as a atmospheric composition archive over that time period. Um, I think they'll explore um, potentially changing this in the future, but as we began um, standing up the CF system, um, this was the, the methodology they chose. Question 16, is there a way to access GSCAM basic composition data? If this question is referring to the composition of aerosols, I believe the CF output does contain the individual, the mass of each individual component in addition to PM 2.5. Uh, but full, a full explanation of the variables included in the CF output uh, can be accessed using the file specification document that I've linked to in my slides. Okay. 
and that might be the end of my questions. If you have any questions um, that we haven't gotten to here, or maybe you think of something later, please feel free to send us an email. And yes, our emails can be found there at the top of the question and answer document. Um, and please join us Thursday for session two of this webinar series. Thank you, everyone. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Hi, Melanie, can I say something about part two? Please. Hey, uh, everyone, I know most people are leaving, but just want to make sure that uh, please check your email and uh, before joining part two, uh, check the website. There is a material for part two, which includes data and code. If you can download that before joining session two on Thursday, that will be uh, easier and help us to split uh, the session two part two exercises. Yeah, that's all. Thank you.